welcome to Fireside Chats. My name is Magla Pillay and it is my pleasure to have in the studio with me today Sister Denise who has been practicing Raj Yoga meditation for over four decades. Today Sister Denise is here to share with us her wealth of wisdom and experience on the interesting subject of humility. This series requires of you, the viewer, to take a look into your heart and your mind and to ask yourself some crucial life-changing questions. One of which is, is there a balance in your life between your inner and your outer world? Are you satisfied with your relationship with God? Do you have any sense of relationship with God? This show also looks at things like philosophical as well as spiritual integrity. We watch and see what the impact is of our spiritual understanding on our consciousness. To this end, I would like to welcome Sister Denise to the studio. Sister Denise, very warm welcome to today's show. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, humility is a virtue from my own understanding of the subject, but it's one of those virtues that has, seems to have lost its importance in today's world. Um, how does it play a role in spiritual understanding? Well, humility is when you have worked through your ego, destroyed your ego, melted your ego. And the world today is very much of an ego-based world and everything revolves around you know the ego positioning the ego defense mechanisms ego of position ego of money ego of possessions ego of beauty all of these things are operating so humility is definitely uh, in short supply yes um why is it that it uh doesn't seem to have any uh, meaning in today's world. Um, from the people who I've known who were or are humble, uh, people tend to not respect them for their humility. Uh, wh why is that? Because it's an ego-based world. So if a person has humility, they actually will win the hearts of those they work with, those they live with, definitely. But when you're looking for respect, you're looking for validation and all of these um, feedbacks, it's very much the currency of ego that's operating. But it's still not going to create the quality of relationship that really makes a person happy inside and satisfied. So we do need to look at what humility really is and uh, actually start working with that currency rather than the uh, ego-based currency. Mm. What does um, humility translate to as a personal experience for an individual? How does it feel on the inside to be humble? I think when you're humble, you're really in touch with yourself. You're not trying to prove anything. You're not showing off, you're not um, operating in terms of masks, because we often talk of ego as a mask. And so when you're unmasked, you're real. Uh, this is it, this is what I am. You get on with what it is you have to do, being who you really are. And um, that is softer, it is... Um, you know, more internalized and you're not trying to be something that you're not. I think also when there is humility, you have a sense of your e equality with other people because in humility, you know that regardless of any position or talent or extra special anything you may have, behind all that, you know, you are a brother in the brotherhood of humanity, a brother or a sister, and that is the, um, you know, the truth of your relationship with other people. And the rest is um, a performance. We're actors, but if we are having ego, you fuse with your role and you get confused with your role. If you're in humility, you can perform when you have to perform your role, but as soon as that's over, you become just the simple you that you are. You know? 
Mr. Denise, um, I suspect that humility is one of those virtues that have been confused, that has been confused with a lot of other aspects, mainly weaknesses, that's got nothing to do with humility. The one word that comes to mind is obsequiousness. Um, somebody who's obsequious, somebody who has a servile attitude, somebody who's um, meek, somebody who's shy, all of these are not virtues, but yet um, somebody who has these virtues has the veneer of being humble. Um, t tell us what, in, in that sense, where the line is, is very fine, um, especially if there is that appearance on the outside. Tell us the difference between that and what you just described. Well, you know, ego has two sides. Which is? One of them is the, the superiority complex, and then the other is the inferiority complex. So you can't think that the inferiority complex is not ego. Uh, and, and maybe that gets confused with humility, but it isn't. It's just another side, the other side of the bad penny of ego, that coin. Mm, sure, that is uh, not widely understood. So somebody who has uh, um, ego has, well, kind of inverted, uh, thinks very little of him or herself. That's still ego. That's still ego. That's not humility. No. Okay. So, um, how about the other things that I mentioned? Obsequiousness, shyness, well, meekness, That's all mildness. ego. You see, it's the other side of the coin because it's not real. Mm. You know, uh, for some reason, a person is prevented, maybe internally prevented, from expressing themselves, you know, because the thing with ego is it's a cover a mask that covers hurt and so if a person's hurt they will you know make themselves look like I'm absolutely okay mm. or they can kind of you know fall into the state of being hurt and forget who they are but we'll still call that ego mm. sure how does um, one uh, who has humility uh, what is his relationship to himself uh, as opposed to somebody who's operating from an ego-based mentality, whether it's insecurity or whether it's superiority? Uh, well, a, a person who is humble is always aware of who they are and they're not trying to get power. They know that they are powerful. They're not trying to prove anything. They know. Uh, who they are and what they are, and I think they get on with it, you see. I think that the ego mask is where you are insecure and you have to show that you are something that you're not. So ego is false. Very often we call it false pride or a, a false mask. It, it isn't real. And behind that false mask, a person is hollow. And, and there really isn't anything there. So that person um, doesn't have substance. I think a person of humility has a lot of substance um, and they really don't need to impose it on anyone or push it on anyone's face or something like this. You can just be one with everybody and um, you know, just be normal, just be natural. Hmm. Um, how does somebody who has the virtue of humility deal with the harshness of life? Because it it comes across as a soft virtue. How does one deal with, uh, uh, well, the ego of others if you are humble? Will you not be used and abused if you are humble? I don't think so, because a person who is humble and soft is also strong, you see. I think that as you develop yourself spiritually, uh, part of the personal development is that your ego comes down. You can drop those masks, you can let that thing go, and, and you can allow the real you to show through because you're comfortable with who you are and what you are. You're not insecure. You know who you are, and so you can just be real. 
one thing that does also happen when a person has a lot of ego masks and has been hurt or traumatized or whatever, then the process of coming down from those masks can sometimes include a lot of humiliation. And in that case, although humiliation is a very unpleasant experience, if you use your, you know, your power to turn things around, your power of transformation, you can actually uh, take enormous benefit from the humiliation and uh, that allows the real you to come through. So then the ego mask shatters. Um, if a person is really hollow inside, they cannot afford to let that mask come down. And so what happens is if your ego gets attacked, because there are clashes of ego, one person with ego clashes with another person with ego and you get these clashes between the masks, then you will do anything to hold on to the mask because you cannot allow it to fall because if it falls, you see this sort of quivering naked person who doesn't have any substance at all behind the mask. You know, when you are powerful on the inside, you can put on any mask needed for any role you have to play, but you can take it off just as easily because what's behind the mask has substance. Mm. Um, you actually encroached on to my next question. Can somebody who is well and truly humble, by your definition, can they be successful in this world? And by that I mean, can they have a successful career in the corporate world? Can he, she be a um, successful surgeon, successful mother, successful anything? Will they be able to market themselves and produce in a world don't you have to when you're in the outside world and especially the environments in which i mentioned it could be quite cutthroat can you succeed in those areas if you have humility because humility sister denise to me appears to be a soft gentle virtue the people that i know are humble they make me soft because they're so soft it's not weak it's soft yeah. but um i haven't seen them in the work environment but I wonder how do they fare in a hostile environment? How does somebody with humility fare in hostility? I think it really depends on how the person approaches it and also what you consider to be success. You see, you can have humility and you can be very, very good at what you do and you establish a reputation. So within your field, you are well known and well respected, but you're not, you know, um, prancing around so that anybody who walks in the door who's nothing to do with your field would immediately feel that, oh yeah, this is somebody. Very often the humble person is not noticed by those who don't know what's behind that simple, soft exterior. And I think that that's a much greater kind of success when you are really happy to be you know, the best that you can be, but you don't need to show off, you see. Mm. There I think you can fare well, because in spite of the fact that this world is ego-based, when people are really good at what they do, and they know that they're good at what they do, um, the self-respect comes with the humility, and then there's really no place for the false mask of ego. Um, can someone be humble and self-confident simultaneously? Definitely, yes. Okay, because uh, they, those two are regarded as almost being antonyms. Well, not really, because um, self-confident is not the same as ego. A person with ego is not self-confident. They have to put on a show of being confident. Mm. But if you are confident, it means that you have faith in yourself. So you're humble, you have faith in yourself, you know who you are, you get on with what you have to do. You don't have to you know, push it in someone's face, you don't have to dress it up, you don't have to have all the status symbols, mm. you know. So there you're, um, you're, you're not 
pushing yourself on other people. So you won't get noticed necessarily, but it doesn't mean that you're not successful in your field. Mm. You know, I think that it's about whether you're brash, it's about whether you're trying to get, you know, media coverage, you're trying to, this expression that you mentioned, market yourself. I don't think it's really about that because, you know, if a product or a person is really good, then, you know, the best um, publicity is reputation. So I think the person with humility who has a good reputation, they're confident in who they are, uh, they're operating within their field, that's good enough. You know. Mr. Hmm. So Denise, could you tell us how your relationship with God has impacted on this particular, in developing this particular virtue within yourself? Well, it's interesting that um, one of the expressions uh, connected with ego that you sometimes hear is ego stands for edging God out, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So when you're in your ego, there's no place for God. And in fact, a person who is in their ego, who's operating in that, they, they will not bring God into it. Mm -hmm. But I think the person with humility will always acknowledge that my success, my talent, my capacity is a gift from God. And they will never say, this is me, this is mine. You know, they will have the humility to acknowledge that ultimately the source of their specialities is God. They will acknowledge that. Mm. And they will always place themselves under God. Mm. You see, they will never say, okay, well, I'm so marvelous that we don't need God mm. because that is self-deception. Because mm. ego is false ego. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an interesting subject, one we should discuss um, entirely on its own because uh, I think it's highly misunderstood what ego is and the impact on one's life. Um, Denise, as far as humility is concerned, is your the um, size of your ego or the presence of your ego within yourself a measure of where you are at as far as humility is concerned? Well, I think that it can be that, you know, a person with a very big ego who got sufficiently humiliated to have to do the personal work that enabled them to actually find their power and find their humility, um, you know, that that's really a person of greatness because it's a lot of work to do that. Mm. So in that sense, yes. Okay, so... Um you mentioned that ego is the mask, um, the soul covering its pain. Now, um, say if somebody did not have the um, experience of humiliation, but is aware of their ego, whether it's um, the inflated kind or whether it's the insecure kind. If I, as an individual, uh, hear what you are saying, and I want to, um, I see humility in many of my friends, and I want to become that also because it's it's such a beautiful virtue. Um, uh, what is my journey towards humility? Well, I, I think it wouldn't really work like that. A person who has ego will not find humility attractive, but rather threatening. Okay. And so they will choose not to see it. Okay. Or they will poo-poo it, you know, mm. um, and they will consider it to be weakness, you see. But um, uh, the person with ego isn't going to just say, oh, I think I have an ego problem. Something will force them to have to face that. And this is where the humiliation is an important factor. Okay. So um, that has happened. Um, how then do I embark on the journey towards humility? What, what, what is my process? Well, the first thing is you have to admit mm. that you are fake, that you sure. are... <laughs> you, Denise, there are very few people who can look in the mirror and say, you're fake. Well, until they get fully humiliated, they can't. Okay, so... So the humiliation to... is maybe not very pleasant, but it is a key to 
further progress. Okay. So, and so if you do get a good dose of humiliation, well, you have to be pretty strong to survive it. And if you are pretty strong to survive it, you can actually use that strength to really develop your your um, humility. And, and you know, we, we have talked on other programs about different kinds of addictions and addictive behavior. So wherever there is addiction, it, it creates and amplifies the ego. So in a sense, it's um, a, a disease of the false ego. So when a person gets um, faced with some dire situation because of their addiction, like you um, are an alcoholic and you killed somebody in a car crash, which happens very much, and you're responsible for having taken someone's life, that can be enough of a humiliation. You may be booked for it, you may be imprisoned for it, uh, you have to face the family of the people, uh, whose uh, significant person you have killed, you know, that may be enough for you to really do the work that's needed uh, to rebuild your life based on something real. Yeah. You see, and that's a lot of work. Yeah. And, and it requires a lot of admission of your wrongdoing, you know. So ego is one of the big vices. Yeah. And you... When you have ego, the one speciality of ego is you can't see it. Oh. Other people can see it. Okay, so you're blind to yourself? You're blind. Yeah, that's, the, that's how come ego can persist, is because you who have it can't see it. And so to be able to see it, something has to happen. Quite a dire thing has to happen or someone has to mirror you in such a way that you get it, you see. And when you do, it is such a horrible experience, a horrible realization of how really fake you are uh, that you cannot continue with it. But the, another problem is that you get a glimpse of it, but you can't really hold on to it because ego is so powerful that as soon as you see it, it'll you know, close that window again, so you remain blind. So you have to have some kind of a mirror. Uh, uh, at, and this is why in, in addiction recovery, the, the self-help system is where different egomaniacs, uh, addicts are reflecting each other and calling each other on their fakery, you see, mm. and this is how it works, and mm. this is why it's successful. Okay. Is it, Denise, the um, a virtue that comes to mind, the quality that comes to mind as I listen to you speak is authenticity. Mm. It seems that um, egolessness and the journey towards humility means becoming authentic and being real. Well, I uh, think humility very... and authenticity is the same thing. Really? Yes. Okay. Now that that is a spiritual secret, uh, freshly revealed. Uh, really, tell us more about that. Well, if you're going to be real, really, really real, uh, you're going to have to acknowledge that all of the specialities and qualities that you have are gifts. You can't take ownership. You can't say it was me, 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 I, I, I. You know, no. I have been endowed. You have to acknowledge, you know, that in a sense that you are almost nothing, but that you have been gifted. And so you have to be a trustee. Mm. You have to be really honest and, and real. Mm. And um, that's a constant work. Mm. Um, most people are hurt, most people are weak, most people are shattered, fragmented, whatever. And so you have layers of ego. So you might be able to take off one mask, but then there's another one sitting behind it, you see, because the thing about ego is it's trying to survive all the time. And so it, it um, will not, you know, it'll hold it rather die than drop that ego mask. 
you see. Mm. And so to be able to drop the ego mask is to be willing to be exposed for what you really are. And if what you are is not very good, there's very little willingness to do that. Um, one cannot have an authentic relationship with God without humility, can one? Without being real, can you? Well, because I, I think God that is real and you've got to be real in order to uh, engage with Him. I think huh? the, the journey of a relationship with God is also the journey of dropping all the layers, all the masks of ego. Because when you're, you know, naked and alone in front of God and you can stand it, uh, that is true humility. You know, and that is also true greatness and beauty and authenticity all rolled into one, you see. But you can understand from what I'm saying how the ego really prevents all of that from happening. Mm. Okay. Mr. Denise, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you right now. Um, it has been extremely interesting and thought-provoking. Um, obviously, one knows about the value of virtue of authenticity, but I never realized up until you mentioned it today that humility and authenticity are actually one and the same virtue because uh, it's not widely known and I think it's one of those deep and precious spiritual secrets um, of that we've uncovered in today's show. So thank you so much for sharing that and the rest of it. So those of you who are at home, uh, the lesson that sat most deeply with me today is Sister Denise's sharing that humility and authenticity um, not just synonyms, she said it's one and the same thing, uh, which makes it very powerful. Um, if, like me, you ascribed um, humility to the section of being soft and vulnerable and unimportant in today's world, uh, I urge you to rethink it. Sister Denise has shed a vast amount of insight into the subject and showed us how humility, um, approaching rather yourself and God and the world from a position of humility is actually a position of strength and not a position of weakness. So um, a very beautiful quality. Uh, I'm sure like me, all the people that you know who are humble, you appreciate them because of your, their humility and not despite it. So um, I would invite you to look at your heart to ask yourself the all important question, are you real and are you humble? I'll leave that with you, and I thank you for joining Sister Denise and myself this afternoon on Fireside Chats, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you, and goodbye.